This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, doing a radio test. Radio test, anyone copy? Yeah, I saw it in WJP. Uh, so again, I mean, you were coming through loud and clear with full quieting, so, uh, but didn't catch your call sign there. Yeah, uh, one more time. This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. I'm just on a little uh, trip here through Heber and just uh, seeing who's out on the repeater, just saying hi, thanks. This uh, is Radio Crash Course Josh. He knows who you yeah, are? <laughs> this is Josh, yeah. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. How's it going? This is great. Yeah, this is uh, KI7 WJP. Um, Didn't here, expect that. As much as I can. I, uh, Hey, what's going on guys? Mike, Phil Crash Survival with Josh Noss, Ham Radio Crash Course, the subject matter expert on all things radios. I mean, he, he's the go-to for comms. He's like, our, he's like our 18 Echo, our Special Forces uh, communications guy when it comes to the team at Phil Craft. And one of the things that we were talking about in content, both rolling out for the Phil Craft Survival app and some content that we did for YouTube was disaster response communications. Um, which includes not only transmitting uh, in worst case scenarios, but also receiving information in worst case scenarios. Um, Josh, what the hell is this stuff? Yeah, you got a lot of things going on here. So let's focus on the receive side first, because that's probably the most approachable, right? Anybody can go get a shortwave receiving radio. In fact, that's what this little guy is here, is a shortwave receiver. But intelligence that you can acquire via radio is incredibly high particularly during a disaster, right? Because you've got your broadcast frequencies like AM on the low side of the frequency space, FM on the higher side, and then everything in between, between there is the short waves, right? HF radio, high frequency radio, which we've already talked about, that's the short waves, right? So harken back to the old radio programming you might have listened to growing up. That kind of thing is still useful in an emergency situation. So having a simple receiver, in an emergency is gonna be paramount, something possibly with a crank or solar or something like that that you can just get up and running really quickly for information gathering. Now you don't wanna keep that from doing its job, leave it turned on, you know, frequency hopping, scanning, whatever, listening for what's going on out there. But then you might wanna deploy one of these other radios. The radio in front there, this bigger one, that's a shortwave transceiver, so transmitter and receiver. Um, it's lower powered for transmit, but it covers all the amateur frequencies. Mm. And we have it just simply connected here to this, what we call a J-pole antenna, which is just two wires really right next to each other. And that allows us to connect to the local repeaters that are here in Heber. There's, there's quite a few actually, and, and we're not that far away from other cities where they have repeaters on mountaintops that we can talk through. So have your listening for emergency uh, signal on that tiny little radio, and then be monitoring on your ham radio, as well as transmitting, and if you had GMRS, this would be a fine time to have that set up and listening on those frequencies as well. GMRS radios are pretty nice because they're channelized. You can just hit scan, and it'll start hopping through all those frequencies, listening for any activity that's going on there, and then if something happens, you can quickly grab it, you know, hit the PTT button to stop it scanning, catch what's going on there and then you know do whatever it is record the information talk back re you know answer a call for help whatever and i think you know a lot of us who are thinking about disaster communications thinks about the apocalypse thinks like that's the worst case scenario a lot of natural disasters that happen in california texas um, everywhere where tornadoes were basically some uh, very tragic circumstances where entire towns were wiped off the face of the planet. In recent history, these communications would pick up the reception of FEMA, right? The Federal Emergency Management uh, sure. System, yeah. they, they communicate, like even their inner communication between like a convoy of people delivering water, you potentially could pick up on that, right? Assuming that the radio is unlocked to be able to receive those frequencies, yeah, and most of those generally can, except for this one. This one's shortwave only, so they'd have to be on those those lower frequencies. I like to use the wildfire example, right? There's wildfires happening all over the place now. And when a wildfire happens, what's it doing? It's taking out power, mm. and it's often in a location that's remote enough that cell phones are already having a tough time getting up there. Yeah. And then whatever infrastructure there was for cell phones just got burnt up anyway. Mm. So these ad hoc solutions, and this is a pretty poor example, we would want to get this point a little higher up in the air, maybe 15 feet or so. 
But with that, we'd be able to hit all the mountains outside here if there's any radios up on them. And then we'd be interoperating with everybody on the other side, on the on the mountain, you know, whatever. And you you could deploy this in a couple of minutes. Really? So um, this is going to extend your range, potentially line of sight where I could see the person to hitting those relay stations in the mountains to communicate over the mountains, Oh, I mean, right? we, we could go direct to those, to those mountains. Really? So if there's a repeater on any one of these mountains, in fact, I, I, we can show it in a little bit here, or we can demonstrate it live. There's a number of repeaters that are all around this area yeah. that I can just go, yeah, show me the nearest one and start talking on it. Oh, right, we should do that. Yeah, let's, okay. Let's do that. All right, so I don't know what you can see here, but I'm gonna enter into, let's call it the digital voice mode, and I'm gonna hit scan just to show you. And I want it to show me all the near repeaters or scan through them. There we go. Is somebody talking? Yeah, so that's... So now it's scanning through all the local repeaters in this area. Oh, wow. And it's doing it super fast. So this guy's a little. And that was somebody's call sign. Would would search and rescue be communicated on this as well? Probably not ham radio. Okay. No. Um, there's very few instances where they would interoperate on the same frequencies as amateur radio. Where would they? they, have they... Their own frequencies. Oh, they have their own set. Yeah. yeah. Dedicated frequency, right? Uh, frequency sets, yeah. Fre okay. Frequency band space. So that's scanning. I, I would put, turn the radio on and scan on. I would just let it do its thing. But if I wanted to hit a local one, so let's let's take it out of that. So I'm going to say, give me a near repeater. I don't care, any type. And it looks like we've got one 6.7 miles away, uh, north-northwest of here. So I'll click on that guy, and I'll just give a check here. This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, doing a radio test. Radio test, anyone copy? So we, is it sending out Morse code? Those are the repeaters that are acknowledging my keying up. So there's a number of repeaters that are probably interconnected uh, that are connected to that. So this the is KI seven WJP. Uh, so again, I mean, you were coming through loud and clear with full quieting. So, uh, but didn't catch your call sign there. Can you ask him who the hell he is? Like, yeah, what he is just he gave doing? his call sign. But what is he doing? Well, here we'll we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Doing a YouTube video? Yeah, uh, one more time. This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. I'm just on a little uh, trip here through Heber and just uh, seeing who's out on the repeater, just saying hi, thanks. This uh, is Radio Crash Course Josh. He knows who you yeah, are? <laughs> this is Josh, yeah. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. How's it going? This is great. Yeah, this is uh, KI7 WJP. Um, Fanny, Didn't expect that. As much as I, can. I uh, maintain the backcountry amateur radio. Uh, He's you know, nervous. So it's kind of neat to hear you on our repeater. Um, right ahead. What are the odds? So that's not scripted or anything. But yeah, literally from a, from a, a chandelier in a kitchen, we, I don't know where, but okay, north. 6.7 miles. So we could walk outside and go north, northwest, and we could probably point to a mountain and go, I bet it's up there, right? So where's north northwest? So there? north northwest is actually towards the Tipanogas. So behind uh, Midway. So this is saying Midway Wilson P. Yeah, he's Wilson. over behind Midway. Right. Yeah. So this antenna is going that way, basically. Yeah. In the, the kitchen, hanging the up in the kitchen. kitchen. Now you, you put this outside and give it 15, 20 feet, you're going to be able to hit everything around here. So if this antenna wasn't up, you wouldn't have been able to do those comms. It's just that little bit? We, we might have been able to do it on this little orange guy, um, but, you know, it, it can depend. It, it, radio is, is an art and a science, but in the sense you, you sometimes have to try things out. I feel like it's all make-believe. No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that like, was all magic. Yeah. It, it's all internet. It's all, no, no, not at all. Um, but, yeah, that, that's literally all it takes sometimes. Now, sometimes it's not that easy. We, we got, you know, it was... You got a, it sounds like you got a good radio infrastructure built up. With what are the radio. odds that we would like put the combo check out and he's like, are you Josh? <laughs> like, how does, he, how does he know? He knew that via your call sign? No, he probably knows because of YouTube. 
But I mean, how did he recognize oh, that it was you? Sign. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My Kilo India six November. But does he have your call sign memorized? I kick off every video with it, so I'm assuming that it's probably burnt in some people's brains. Mike Glover never heard of her. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, he knew you guys. Dude, it, I, that's so crazy. But you said like this this guy was it signal stuff? Yes. So this antenna here and these antennas are made by signal stuff. He's a Utah guy too, right? Yeah, yes. So, yeah. Signal stuff. Uh, makes the this is called the signal stick, the super elastic signal stick, all made in Utah, handmade. Yeah, and, and that potentially could have hit him versus this. Potentially. Now let let's compare and contrast. The the radiating portion of this antenna is 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 this length, right? Yeah. Versus this length. Yeah. Is a bit shorter. And if we go back to our discussion earlier today. The frequency is the literal expression in meters. So when I say the VHF on this radio is the two meter band, two meters. Oh, two meters out this way. The, the RF wide. Yeah. But you put that into a tenna sense, this is probably roughly a half wave, yeah. half wavelength. Uh, a J pole, I think, is a half wavelength antenna uh, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Or a quarter wave. This is not that, right? This is not a full length or half length antenna, it's probably more like a quarter wavelength antenna. That's in the weeds a little bit, but we generally have to have the length of wire close to matching as some length of the antenna. Hmm. Either one quarter, one half, or one full wavelength. What? Um, yeah, so... So, if I needed one piece of equipment, I know you hate answering this way, but I needed it for receiving information, mm -hmm transmitting information mm -hmm. and having it set up as a base station for communication during a disaster, would that be your recommendation? If I wanted all the things, all the frequencies, even down to the super, super low, yeah, I would go with something like that ICOM 705. Now, you will have to change antennas. So that's the reality of this. This is only going to get you VHF, UHF. Yeah. If I want to talk to people on the super low frequencies for HF, now you're talking about 40 feet of wire we got to shoot across the yard in, in that kind of sense. Yeah. Um, that'll let you listen to pretty much anything and transmit on most things. So it's an antenna variability versus yeah. this works for most that of it. That works with everything. You just need to yeah. work, swap out antennas. But I mean, just to keep it simple too, let, let's just take going back to the handheld, right? I can fold this up and it fits the size of my fist, if not smaller. That can disappear in a bag. Uh, this antenna can just live on here, and you can swap it out in an instant. So this is the man packable version. Right, so now I'm on this antenna. Got it. All I did was just disconnect the BNC connector, and now I'm on that. Yeah. Now I'm on this antenna. And this is the Yesu VX6. Now I gotta buy that. Thanks, Josh. Gotta get one of those. This now. is this is the robust, water resistant, shock resistant radio. And right. if I if I took this Mojave repeater, like let's say I lived on a piece of terrain, I mean hell, my house mm -hmm. is this piece of terrain where I wanted to get across to my buddy who lives in the next valley. Yes, I could put this up in the top of the mountain and hop down. What'd you call it? You said something. Cross band or uh, bent pipe. Bent pipe. So I'm going to transmit into this and yeah. it's going to simultaneously transmit out on a different frequency. Yeah. And that allows us to talk back and forth. So this is the Mojave repeater. They make a couple of different yeah. items, I believe. And this is this is just hopping the, the mm -hmm. communication. Right. Huh. Now, Go from pack, so here's your pack or your, let's call it your emergency kit. Let's say, all right, emergency happened. I got to put this outside the house at about 15 feet. Boom, you got that up. You're running on this little guy. And now you're like, oh, I actually got to like leave. We got to go. Okay, we're going to disconnect that, pack that guy up. But now you just take your mag mount antenna, throw this on the vehicle if you don't have a setup, and then just go ahead and connect it that insane antenna connected right on top and there you go. See, I like the adaptability of that. Like yeah. having the antenna options based on, you know, you can have the antenna pre-rigged in your motorcycle, mm -hmm. your mobility platform, mm -hmm. um, your man packable version and your home version, your patrol or your uh, base camp right. setup. Right. And and be able to interoperate with just one 
one uh, right. radio. And then the scales, right? So let's say you're starting your amateur radio journey, or, or GMRS kind of works the same way. Similar type of antennas, similar type of things possible. This is 100 bucks, a couple hundred bucks, or you want to go cheaper than that. This is, I don't know, 20 bucks. Yeah. For $20 antenna, $20 mag mount. See if you like it, and then that's like your kit. That's like your little go kit. And then if you decide, I'm going to get a little bit more permanent, I'm going to put a mobile radio in my car. Mm. Well, you don't get rid of any of this stuff. This all just is its own thing. They just live together now over there. But now you got a mobile radio with a permanent installation antenna on your vehicle. That works just as well for an emergency situation or mobile radio communication system as well. Is that GMRS as well? No. Uh, good. This is also a good clarification. It's technically not within the FCC rules that you have a radio that does all the things. They don't want that. Mm -hmm. They want you to go have an FRS radio, go get a GMRS license, and get your amateur radio license. That's not to say it's not possible. They just generally frown upon it. That one does not. That one cannot communicate to a GMRS radio. It cannot. Okay. Now, you should be able to at least open up the receive that you can receive those GMRS frequencies, but you won't be able to interoperate on them. Okay. That is for... Ham radio. That is a ham radio. That's right. Amateur radio. Okay. Awesome. Um, so, guys, if you're interested in more of this stuff, let's um, go over the educational platforms that you have because you also do live feeds on YouTube. You yes. do all these things, right? Yeah. So, every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, I do a live stream that covers some aspect of amateur radio. We try and introduce people to new aspects of it, whether you're new or been doing it for a long time. We, we try to make it new, fun, interesting for whatever's hot out there, or, or just a deep dive into different technologies. We just finished a new series, complete video series, on test testing materials for studying the amateur radio technician license, which is that first level. We have a very no-nonsense approach. We focus on the right answers, give you some context to that that you can kind of build upon, and hopefully take some practice exams Go to hamstudy.org for practice exams. It's a free service that allows you to uh, test until you're comfortable, until you start passing, and then you can go get your license. Awesome. All the links to Josh's social, to his YouTube channel, all the stuff that I learned from um, even before I knew Josh, and we did, I think we did a YouTube video like five or six years ago. Yeah. Um, it's been a long time. I learned from him, and I imagine if you want to go down the rabbit hole, you need to get that content so make sure you digest that. I appreciate you, Josh. Thanks for this, too. This was yeah. incredible. What are the odds? What are the odds that would happen? The guy in his garage somewhere right now monitoring the radio is like, Josh, ham radio crash course? There's no way. That's so awesome. That's awesome. All right, guys. Till next time. Thank Peace you. out.